In this quick video, we're going to talk about UPJ obstruction or ureteral pelvic junction obstruction, where there's a narrowing or blockage in the tube that leads out of the urine chamber from the kidney, causing slow drainage of urine from the kidney. So this is a CAT scan of a patient with UPJ obstruction. As we scroll down, the person's lying down, so their back is here, stomach is here, legs are coming out towards you, and the head is going into the screen. As we scroll down, we're going through the abdomen, the liver on the right side, the spleen on the left, the left kidney, and the right kidney. <clears throat> One of the things you can see right away here is that you can barely see the urine chamber on the left, which is normal. On the right, the urine chamber is stretched out. That's called hydronephrosis. This is the stretched out renal pelvis. So this is an example of hydronephrosis. Same thing with the patient, sort of as if they're standing up. You can see the urine chamber is very prominent here, collapsed and normal on the other side. Stretched out. This is the renal pelvis stretched out. Classic scenario of UPJ obstruction. This is what's called a nuclear scan. So imagine this is a sort of blurry, zoomed out view of the right kidney left kidney and the bladder and then each one of these little pictures is a snapshot over time so what's happening is the kidneys light up and then that's the blood flowing to the outer part of the kidney and then the kidneys are making urine and the the um, urine is collecting in the urine chamber now on the left side see the kidney is getting darker as the urine is flowing out very normal so the kidney gets darker as the urine drains out on the right side however it's staying bright because the urine is trapped in that urine chamber there and if we look over here we can see that by the time the left kidney is already dark the right kidney is still holding on to that contrast. The bladder is filling up mostly with urine from the left kidney. And this is consistent with UPJ obstruction. So importantly, they say they time how long it takes when the kidney is at its brightest to get half as dark. The left side is close to normal. We like it to be under 10 minutes, but... Here it's a little bit higher, but on the right, it's 35 minutes. Anything greater than 20 minutes is considered blocked. So I want to explain a little bit about UPJ obstruction and what exactly a pyeloplasty procedure is. Let's start off with some anatomy. So this is the urinary tract in men and women. You can see really what's different is the reproductive organs down below, but up top, the kidneys and the tubes that drain the kidneys, called the ureters, are really the same in men and women. So here's another cartoon view of the kidneys. This one has been sliced open so that you can see the kidney has a working portion, which is the outer substance of the kidney, and an inside hollow urine chamber where the urine that's made drips into. And... Um, the kidneys are connected to the largest blood vessels in the body, the aorta and the vena cava, which are feeding blood in and out of the kidney constantly, cycling blood through the kidney, where the kidney acts like a filter to make urine, where impurities and waste products are expelled down into the bladder. Here's another cartoon slice through the kidney where you can see the urine chamber feeding from all these branches from different sections of the kidney. The wide portion of the urine chamber is called the renal pelvis. Not to be confused with your actual pelvis, 
but this part is called the renal pelvis and this part's called the ureter tube and the junction between the two is called the ureter pelvis junction or UPJ and in a normal patient there really is no junction it's just a gradual narrowing or a gradual tapering sort of like a funnel some patients are born with blockage at the UPJ called UPJ obstruction and that can be either from scar tissue or narrowing, <coughs> excuse me, narrowing of the actual inside portion of that tube or something called a crossing blood vessel. There's all these branches of blood vessels that feed the kidney. In some patients, there's an extra one that drapes across this from the outside, compressing the tube and causing it to kink in that location. And the urine pools or collects here, stretching out the urine chamber. This is called hydronephrosis. <coughs> and this is one cartoon example of a pyeloplasty where this narrow section is removed. We have a hole in the renal pelvis and a hole in the ureter, and they're sewn together in a way that is nice and wide open and not blocked. And here's a more close-up view. This is the narrow section of the UPJ. This is cut, and on the ureter side, in order to make this a larger opening, the surgeon cuts down just one side of the tube so that this opening size matches up a little bit better with the larger opening in the renal pelvis, the upper part of the urine chamber and the tube, and these are sewn together. This blue thing is a plastic stent that stays in for five or six weeks. So the narrow section is gone. These two are joined together, and the surgeon is going to sew each side of these connections, sewing the top side here, and then sewing the bottom side. So we've got sutures on the top, sutures on the bottom in order to reconnect these to each other. This is the only part that's still open. And now the full job is complete. That stent stays in there to promote nice healing of this area. And then it's removed with a very minor procedure in the office five or six weeks later. Most common way for this to be done now is something called robotic surgery where we make little cuts on the skin surface, something like this. And every surgeon is a little bit different. One of the things that can happen in the immediate period after surgery is urine could leak out internally between the stitches. And to detect that, sometimes the surgeon will leave a temporary plastic drain to wick away any fluid, which would alert us that urine is leaking from the um, surgical site during the post-op period. Typically, that's removed before you go home, if it's placed at all. And this is a picture of what a stent looks like. This is a stent placed for a kidney stone, which isn't the case here, but just to show you what a stent looks like, that it goes all the way from the kidney all the way down into the bladder.